Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to sew rolled hems on the bias. Yes, through the years, I've brought you guys videos about rolled hems that include examples of different fabric types and even curves with the bias, but this video is exclusively showing you three ways to sew a teeny tiny rolled hem on the most challenging of all, the bias. First of all, what is the bias? Why is it so stretchy and difficult? Let's take a deep dive, per usual, and answer those burning questions, along with, when will you likely encounter bias in garment construction? And most of all, how do we conquer it? Don't be scared, I make it easy. Woven fabrics are said to either be on grain or on the bias. On grain fibers look like a hashtag, bias fibers, run diagonal like the lines in the letter X. They have been cut at a 45 degree angle to the selvage or sides of the woven fabric. If you closely visually inspect the fabric, you can usually determine which way the fabric was cut and positioned. It can be pretty obvious. The grain of the fabric plays an important role in the fit and drape of the garment. We won't go into that too much today, but I want you to understand that in sewing, coming across fabric that is cut and sewn on the bias is difficult to avoid. It's best to face the challenge head on and learn to hem a gown that is on the bias. Some places you will see this is when you are hemming a circle skirt. This is tricky because since it is cut out like a literal circle, some places will be on grain and some will be on the bias. You'll want to prepare yourself for the challenge by pre-selecting a hemming method that will work for the whole hem. You'll often encounter skirts that are intentionally and wholly cut on the bias as well. These skirts are often a silk satin or charmeuse and really hug curves nicely without needing additional seams to interrupt the natural drape of the fabric. Now that we can recognize this cut, let's go over three of my personal favorite ways to roll him on the bias. I'll show you step by step and in the end, we'll compare all three. I would say that this first method requires the most prep work of the three, but it is practically foolproof for dealing with my most ornery hymns. There are wonder tapes on the market for this kind of job, but my favorite way of doing it is just to use 5 8 inch wide fusible tape, and you saw that on the roll, and then also 5 8 inch wide ribbon. I know this sounds really wide for a teeny tiny hem, but you gotta see how this is gonna work. So first, I just kind of stack them, and then I go over it with the iron just to kind of soften that fusible webbing just a little bit. Then I come back and really get down on it with some steam, heat things up, and fuse them together. I'm going to make certain that the layers are adequately fused together before I start into my next step, which is cutting. You can see here that it is important to make sure that it is fused all the way to the very edge because I cut away almost everything that I stacked there together. I'm just going to leave this little bitty sliver of ribbon. This will do two things. It will keep the fabric edge from stretching as I sew, and then it's also going to be somewhat of a guide for the size of my roll. I just find that the roll seems to be a little more consistent in size when I use this method. Now let's sew it. Per my previous rolled hems tips video, I'm using a small needle and a fine thread. I prefer hand rolling to a foot, but you do you. There's no judgment here. Everyone has to do what works best for them. I make sure to keep a moderate amount of tension on the roll as I sew it. I make sure to pull to the left with my left hand to keep the roll tight and small as I sew. This is a very, very important tip. Now 
Now always press your hem when you're finished. Don't forget, you can buy wash away hem stabilizers for this job too. Do you have a favorite brand hem stabilizer? Let us know in the comments. Don't keep it a secret. Now let's learn two more methods because this is not always gonna work for you, especially if it's extremely light, semi-sheer fabric that the ribbon piece would be a little bit too opaque for. The second method is the most common that I see. I call it the two-step method. I rarely use this method, so this is the one that causes the rioting in the streets every time I do a rolled hem tutorial and leave it out. <laughs> I can hear them now. Hand roll it. Pass the pitchfork, please. Refuse to use a rolling attachment? Will you kindly light my torch? Roll the hem in one step? That's it. We ride at dawn. Whew. Did I mention the sewing community can be a little bit touchy? <clears throat> okay, let's get back to work. First step, press your fold or use your spatial memory to fold as you sew. Personally, I like to just fold it approximately one quarter of an inch. This is just one fold and you sew it as close to the edge as you can. Keep it straight. Next, trim it away with applique, duckbill, or even regular scissors. The ones with the paddle just make it easier to not accidentally snip the back side of what you are trimming. Next, give it another press, or just roll it one more time and sew it down. The first roll kind of acts like the ribbon did in my first method. It prevents excessive stretching and can act as a guide. Now let's look into the third method. This is my classic hand rolling method, the LaVolt method, if you will. <laughs> I essentially do both rolls by hand in one pass. This takes practice, but it can really pay off. It's a huge time saver in a professional sewing environment. If you want really detailed instructions on this, check out my playlist. I have entire videos dedicated to mastering it. Let's talk pros and cons. The two-step method is arguably one of the neatest ways of rolling. It does make a very pretty roll. It's almost always perfect looking, and if you don't mind two rows of stitches on the inside of the roll, it's great. The main drawback for me is that it's very time consuming. It takes more than twice as long for me. But repetition brings efficiency. You do what's best for you. The cons of the hand rolling method is that it can be trickier to do on the bias, but it's not impossible. It will also often have to have the stretch pressed out of it. Neatness can suffer as you are learning the technique. Let's compare the results. In all of the shots, the samples will be ordered just like this. The stabilized will be the closest to the camera. As you can see, they are all very similar, although I think the stabilized one is the tightest and the neatest. Let's compare the drape. Stabilized is on the top. The extra piece of ribbon is not affecting the drape on this lightweight lining. And here is how all three of them look on the outside. They all look very, very neat. As you can see, there's no reason to fear having to put a roll tim on the bias.